Hey everybody, thank you so much for listening to Real Final Boy. Oh my gosh, it's amazing! <laughs> we always nail those intros. Scott, uh, I'm here with uh, Scott. Scott, how you doing, sir? Doing so good. I was glad I was able to participate in that little uh, comic, uh, little spoof there. I I, I, I appreciate. Why that. don't we? Why have we not started an improv uh, group yet? Be- because we're states away. <laughs> if okay, I, all right, fair if, enough. If if, if I move. W- Hopefully, when I move to Denver, if my job ever puts a branch out there, then yes, we will totally do an improv group, because I would do that with you. Cause improv- yeah. All right, I'll hold you to that. Okay, no, but- I'll hold you to that. All right, perfect. Uh, uh, let's be holding each other. Sweet. Oh, that's all. That's all I've ever wanted. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but, guys, thank you so much for listening. We have a review up for... So, this is kind of weird. So, this movie came out... And it was pretty limited release from what I remember, because I I remember I think I saw maybe one commercial for it, like maybe one commercial. And then it just it it just kind of went it just kind of went away like no one ever brought it up again. Um, That movie is Midnight Special, which uh, stars uh, everyone's favorite villain, villainous asshole from uh, from (laughs) Premium Rush. From pre- well, oh, 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 excuse me. Yeah, I'm jumping the gun here. Yeah, but yeah, he was in Warwick Empire, but yeah, he was a dick in Premium Rush, but he was great. Um, but uh, yeah, Michael Michael Shannon, of, of course. Uh, and I gotta tell you, man, and I forgot he was in 99 Homes, and he was such an asshole in that, too. Like, Michael Shannon plays a great asshole. He's got, also got, like, a slight, like, list in his eye like he's got like a slight lazy eye so that like it makes him that much more intense because like he's got like these like crazy eyes and especially like in this movie that's kind of weird like when you when he like just gets very intense kind of like in boardwalk empire he would just get like just crazy as hell and that's why i love it he can just get super intense he can get to that level and just instantaneously, that's what I love about him. Yeah, I mean, so I I I, uh, I remember that, uh, and, and I gotta give Michael Shannon a lot of credit. He's actually one of my favorite actors working. Um, he I actually liked him in Man of Steel. He was one of the few things I liked about Man of Steel. Um, but then of course he was in Ninety Nine Homes, as I mentioned, which he was amazing in. Um, he was amazing in the night before. <laughs> like he really is, and he was in Mud. Um, Michael Shane's an incredible actor, and I don't think he really gets the props he deserves. Um, but when he commits to a character, he commits that character, and um, he, he was he was incredible in this. He really was. So, um, Scott, I'm gonna let you go ahead and give the synopsis for this movie. So go ahead, fill fill us in the crowd in. So it's it kind of a bit of a Close Encounters type movie where you don't really know what's going on for most of the movie. And in this movie, you don't really know what's going on, you know, fully until the end. And they not really string you along, but they kind of leave you clues along the way. And it, the whole story <clears throat> evolves around this boy, um, played by Jaden Lieberher? 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 I think and, Lieberher. Yeah, I'll, I'll go with that. Um, and his dad, played by Michael Shane Roy. Um, and essentially, you know, the whole movie is them on the move. And them, the government, um, them versus, you know, whatever agency is out there to get get him, um, get Alton and take him away. And it, it's not only that, but it's also his relationship with Roy and, you know, consequently his relationship with Lucas played by Joel Egerton, who, um, Edgerton, excuse me, um, who I love. If you don't remember him from things like smoke and aces and, um, uh, let's see, what else was he in? Uh, black mass, which I really liked him in, uh, been in the great Gatsby. Um, there's, there's a number of movies that he's been in that, um, you know, I feel like he's another one of those guys. These these both seem like um, 
not character actors, but secondary actors, not necessarily lead actors or more more of a supporting role type, you know, characters that these guys play. And it was co- kind of cool to see them there together, um, kind of co-heading this this journey. Um, Kirsten Dunst was actually really good in this. Um, yeah, she was. She comes on as the mother and of Alton. Um, just it's a it's it's a feel movie. I don't know if that makes sense, but it's it's one of those movies that. Um, the music very much sways your emotions and the way that yes. the movie goes. Um, it really, like I said, it's it's very much about the feel of the movie rather than the the substance. And the substance kind of lends to the feel and vice versa. But um, you know, essentially, Roy and Sarah and Lucas um, are taking out and. Um, to basically an unknown location. Um, Alton has powers, uh, which are, I thought, a bit clouded in this whole thing. I feel like they could have maybe touched that up a bit of the specifics of his powers. and That's fair. I didn't really understand them very well. Um, and then kind of at the end is really when he can utilize them and you kind of get to see them in, in it all its glory. But... Um, yeah, I, I guess that would be the synopsis, of just kind of a on the run type of movie. Um, Adam Driver, who I really like, um, Kylo Ren. <laughs> yeah, Kylo Ren. Um, he plays a great role in this. I thought this was well cast. I thought that they had um, a lot of great actors and actresses in this movie, and even you know, kid actors can really be here, you know, hit and miss. Um, yes, they can. And I think uh, Jaden really really stepped it up and played played the role that they needed him to be. Yeah, I, I gotta say, man, I, um... <sighs> okay, this is what I'm gonna say. Th- this is the definition of a term I don't... I haven't used very often on here, but I definitely use uh, off-mic talking to people about film. This is a breadcrumbs movie, in the sense that the movie will give you a little bit here and a little bit here, and it really does build. So if you don't like slow burn movies, you're probably not going to be happy with this, just because you won't know what's going on until like the last half hour-ish, roughly. Um, but I was sitting there, this is this plays out like a mystery. This felt, and I know we've said this before, Scott, but this felt like a Twilight Zone episode, and I mean that in the best way. Uh, I love your comparison to Close Encounters, by the way. Um, that that definitely felt like this. It felt a little bit like Super 8, if you ever saw mm-hmm, that. Definitely. Um, um, and I, I want to say, I think I mentioned it, but this was written and directed by Jeff Nichols, who um, I know everyone said that M. Night Shyamalan was going to be the next Spielberg. Uh, look how that turned out. Um, but, um, this dude, oh my god, between this and um, between this and uh, Take Shelter, I don't know if you ever saw that, but that was amazing, and Mud, this guy is incredible. He need he needs to do something big budget, and I mean that because uh, he's earned it. He he really has, and uh, this is the third time he's worked with Michael Shannon because he worked with him in Take Shelter and Mud. Um, this guy's incredible, and he as I mentioned, he has earned a shot at a, a, a film franchise, perhaps a Marvel movie. But um, but this but this guy what? <laughs> but no, nothing. But I, I know, you, come on, I had, to, I had to throw it out there. But it, the way he really does do a great job of leading leading the film, giving you just enough, but not giving you so much that you're like, you can figure it out. Um, I do agree with you. I think the kid's powers, uh, I think uh, Alton's powers could have been better defined. Because it does feel like at the end when he kind of just starts going off, I was like, well, I would have appreciated like, a little exposition about it. I mean, you get a little... I would have liked a little more to flush it out. Maybe, you know, not a lot more, but just a little more. Um, but with that said, though, um, you kind of hit the nail right on the head. Uh, some kid actors... Man, kid actors can just drag a movie down if they're bad. And uh, Jaden... Uh, how'd you say his name? Uh, Leberher? Yeah, Lieben... 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 Yeah. Even my been... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, the Jaden. <gasps> Sorry, we're just butchering it right yeah, now. Yeah, <laughs> I know. The kid, yeah, someone's gonna give this to the kid. Like, God, this guy sucked. I can't say my last name. But, um, 
man, was he he was great in this. Um, I was mad at Colin. Uh, by the way, Colin, we love you. We miss you. Um, Colin pointed this out about uh, the first season of Daredevil when the kid, like, they do the flashback to the kid going blind, and he goes, I can't see! And Colin was like, that was a little overacting. I went back and watched it, and I'm like, god damn, he is right. There's never that moment with this kid, and he's freaking out, as he should be, with his powers, and I never had that moment where I went, and eh, that was a little campy. The, the kid is kind of in this really good balance where it's, a mature performance, but you still you never forget like he's a kid. If that makes sense, definitely. I I hundred percent agree. There's a a transformation that he makes, um, probably about three quarters of the way through this movie, from you know a, someone who's unsure of himself and just downright scared to a kid that's confident and clearly, um, you know, older than his age leads on to be in, in his mind and. I think to be able to make that transition is is pretty rare um, in most actors, and I feel like he was really able to nail that. Is you know, especially without he, he leaving in enough. Um, I don't know what you would call it, uh, childhood spunk or naivety, um, that you still believe that he's a kid, and that that's kind of uh, even though he is maybe um, something unhuman he is still young and inexperienced and scared like like everybody else is you know what i was thinking the whole time watching this movie i was like man if they had subbed in this kid uh for pan it probably would have made it go up <laughs> no seriously though because this kid i think he could have made that switch much better than Levi, yeah, who, but there's uh, who, a lot more wrong with that movie. No, I, I, know, I, I know, but, <laughs> but you, you get what right. I mean. It would help. Like, it would help. Yeah, because this kid, I mean, he, when, you're right. When he makes that turn, um, and it sucks because we, can't, I don't want to spoil this movie, so I'm, I'm, I'm tap dancing around some stuff. But there's a scene with him and uh, Adam Driver who plays a uh, Sevier. Um, their scene together. Oh my god, that's when I went, ooh, this kid is not fucking about, you guys, <laughs> like, you should have left him alone, and, and, ah, uh, this, this also really reminded me, too, of, uh, the total opposite end of the spectrum for how I felt about Tomorrowland, and how those kids just pissed me off, and how I didn't care if anything happened to him. This kid I was invested in, I was like, I, I, I want to know what's gonna happen to you, I want to know, you know, what your powers are about, um, I thought this was, uh, I don't know what the budget was on this. It didn't seem super expensive, but to be totally honest, it didn't need to be mm-hmm. because um, it, and it, it, they spent the majority of the time in hotel rooms and things like that. So it was, I feel like, let's see, budget was $18 million Okay. So, estimated. So, yeah, I mean, it's not, not a really expensive movie. Yeah, but I mean, you could definitely tell, I mean, the cinematography on this was super well done, and you could definitely tell that there were, um, especially the last half hour, they really get to show off. And, 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 you know, and I think they really, um, there's a part, I mean, you, it's not necessarily a spoiler because you can see it on the cover, but um, these kind of flare type things come sh- shooting down from the sky at one point, and there's enough action to leave you satisfied, but um, not over the top. I feel like they never went over the top with the explosions and like the car car chasing scenes or them running. I thought it was really well tempoed, and you know even even when there was action, it was suspenseful enough that you didn't really know what was going on, but <clears throat> it kept your attention. And just to go back to the um, to Alton, you think you can really easily make a kid uh, write a kid uh, a ch- child as being whiny, and that's a yeah. huge turn off for me when I watch a sh- watch a movie. But this was, they really I think they they nailed that character to where he was scared, but he didn't complain about it. You know, yeah, he never felt weak to me, exactly. and that was and that was the other thing. Um, this also had definitely had hints of. Uh, like Race to Witch Mountain, like those movies, mm-hmm. and definitely um, E.T., Close Encounters, as you mentioned. I mean, it, it really does feel like it takes and picks a lot from multiple sci-fi movies and elements, but it never feels cheap in the way it does it. It feels organic. Um, there really wasn't a decision that 
the film made that I went, oh, come on, which is probably the hardest thing to do with sci-fi, especially when you're establishing your universe. Um, I I do agree with you with the powers thing. I, I wish you would define those a little better. But to be totally honest, I was sitting there, I'm like, do I have a complaint about this movie? And I was like, outside of that, not not really. What did, I, you, what did you think of the ending? How did you feel like the ending was wrapped up? So, okay. It's so, and, and, I, and I believe we... Actually, we did review this. We reviewed Ten Cloverfield, didn't we? We did. Because I remember that was a big thing with us that we were like, oh, it was it was so close, and in the ending, I was like, oh, <laughs> it really took me out of it. Um, for me, I think the ending it came to made sense. Mm-hmm. I probably would have liked something maybe a little more uplifting, mm-hmm. but that's just me. That's not the tone the film had established early on. That was just kind of me being selfish. So mm-hmm. I fully acknowledge that. Um, it didn't make me freak like I did with 10 Cloverfield Lane. The ending it got to, I went, you know what? Okay. I, I was definitely okay with the ending. Oh, what about you, man? I, I really liked the emotion of it. And I thought that, you know, because the, the real emotion in it lied between Alton and Roy and their connection, you know, father, do- a father, son connection. Um, and kind of how that plays out in the end. I think the execution in how they decided to play out that event, um, I I didn't really know what to make of it. I didn't know if it was necessary, I guess. It made it, it kind of brought the uh, secret out into light, and... Um, I don't know if from like a realistic standpoint, if I was super sold on it, but, um, but the way that the movie went emotionally, um, it was a really nice flow. So it didn't take me out of it, but recalling on it, um, as we were, before we were getting into this review, just kind of remembering the ending, it was, I feel like they could have gone a lot of different ways with that. Um, and kept that emotional, um, you know, power there. But I don't think it was necessarily the best, the, the best decision of of the ending, of the way that they put it together. Okay, hey, fair, fair enough. I, um, you're wrong, but I'm, I'm kidding. But I'm <laughs> totally kidding. But I mean, I, I get what you're saying. I do. It just didn't. It wasn't enough to make me go. Right. Oh, come on. So. Right. Oh no, for um, sure. And it, like I said, it didn't take me out of it. It's just kind of recalling on. It's like you know what? I I probably could have not used that in it. Yeah, that's fair. I I mean, I will say the ending. Even though, like I said, I didn't have major complaints. That was enough uh, to get to my final thoughts here. That was enough to get, keep me from giving it a fan fucking tastic. But with that said, I did enjoy everything else so much with it. Um. This wasn't like No Country for Old Men, where I just was like, I'm knocking you down two grades just because <laughs> you just fucking gave me nothing as far as an ending. Um, this gave me an ending I was okay with. Um, and Michael Shannon, d- dude, between this and 99 Homes, man, he- he's been doing an incredible job with what he's been given. Um, maybe this is just, maybe he should just keep working with Jeff Nichols, because it seems like he does really good shit when, he, when they work together. So, um... To get to my uh, to get to my rating here, <coughs> pardon me. Uh, I gotta give this a solid A. Uh, I really enjoyed this. Um, this may go down. This this really does take me back to why I love sci-fi. Um, I, I enjoyed this so much. So yeah, this is a solid A for me. Uh, Scott, your final thoughts, sir? Yeah, it's. <coughs> Definitely an enjoyable movie and something that kept me watching it. Um, I don't know if it's one that I would say that I would go back and watch just because I feel like there was... I, I get You kind of get picked up right in the middle of their story, right? And you don't know a lot about the kid or his powers or if he has any or what's wrong with him. And I feel like from beginning to end, it was more of a like a chase movie, and 
it, it can, it, like you said, it can get at times, when you do a movie like that, to kind of dole out a little bit. I don't know, it wasn't, it's not like a movie I was super psyched when I got done with it, but I thoroughly enjoyed it, and I would recommend it to anybody to go see it. Um, but yeah, it was solid movie, solid actors. I think the the acting was better than the movie as a whole. Um, That's fair. But I got to give this one a B plus. I really. Ah, oh, can go in my. <laughs> I know, I know. I Damn just, God. All I right, just right, didn't come out loving it, um, but I fair. I really did enjoy it. It was it's a solid movie, and it, like you said, and they're. They're bringing it with the sci-fi. Like, movies lately with the sci-fi is, um, I'm feeling it. Yeah, I, I mean, and, and I, I hope this this kid gets to end up uh, doing more stuff, because I think this kid showed up a lot more emotion than a lot of... And can we say real quick, we talked about this off-camera, off um, Kirsten Dunst, like, you know, we talk about people aging. Um, boy, she... She like age is she's aging very gracefully if I can even say that I mean yeah. oh yeah like it's she played such a mature role and didn't play over the top and just really you know it she definitely added a lot to this movie yeah I, I heard she was great on this past season of Fargo I haven't seen it yet but uh, yeah I, re- I enjoy her when she's one of those actresses where I see she's in something I go oh okay like I can actually I I actually want to see this now. Um, yeah, she, she has a, she comes in about, would you say about halfway through? Yeah, about half. Um, and I thought she was, and I thought she brought a lot of gravitas to it. Um, and her and Michael Shane play off each other really well, and her and, uh, her and the kid play off each other really well. Um, yeah, she did a really good job. I, I was very impressed with her. Um, you know, I, I, I still think of her as the girl from Spider-Man and Bring It On. I mean, you know, and it, I, what, what can I say? I, I, but... I really do like I, I really do like Kirsten Dunst. Um, of course, the Total Sunshine too, and Kiki's Delivery Service, which is a shirt I'm wearing right now. But um, yeah, she she did a great she did a great job with this. So yeah, go support this movie. Go sh- support um, this this director Jeff Nichols because he's proven of his last couple films that he's ready for more people to know who he is. Um, I mean, he's and he's only done um, like he's only. Produce or written or directed like four or five movies so far in his career. So I mean, let's look it up. Yeah. So I mean, you know, but there, there's not a movie that he, uh, the lowest rated film that he has that he's directed is Midnight Special. And that's 84 percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Like that's incredible. Um, Mud's at a 98 percent. Take Shelters at a 92. Like you want to talk about this guy really just finding his seemingly finding his niche. Um, he knows what he's doing. So. Yeah, support this dude because we need better. We need great directors like him to keep working. So, uh, guys, what did you think of Midnight Special? If you happen to see it, uh, let us know. Um, you can follow us here on SoundCloud, The Real Pineapple Seven Seven Five. You can follow yours truly on the Twitter at J Hunter Real Pineapple. You can follow Mr. Scott on Twitter at Newman the First. And you can like us on Facebook at The Real Pineapple. We will have reviews up for. Uh, for Stranger Things, we'll have a review up for <laughs> for Mechanic Resurrection, which I'm so I I can't even go outside and see that. Um, and we'll have some other stuff for you guys up as well this week. Uh, thank guys, thank you so much for listening. We'll talk to you soon. Later.